Hello everyone and welcome back to another Golang tutorial. So in this video we're going to talk about maps. Now maps allow us to store what's known as key value pairs. So a key maps to some value, that's why it's called a map. So contrasting this to arrays where we had something that looked like, you know, all these random values, the way we access these was by their position in the array, so the order in which they occurred. And arrays are really good at storing ordered data where the order of this information actually matters or most of the time it does. And in fact, to access the values, we know that the first value we access with index zero and the last one we would access with the length of the array minus one. So the positions really matter and that's how we access elements. Now, in some cases, we actually don't care about the positions or the indexes. We just care about the presence of elements, right? So we care about some key mapping to some value. It doesn't matter what order they are in. And in fact, a map does not maintain any order. So I'll start showing some examples so this makes sense. But to create a map, this is what we do. Something like var mp, and then we can define the type that we want this map to be. So there's a few different ways and I'll go through them. But we write map we put what type we want the key to be here. In this case, I'm going to put string. And then we put what type we want the value to be at the end. So what this is saying is I'm making a map that has string keys that point to integer values. So an example of a string key pointing to an integer value could be something like apples pointing to one, maybe signifying that we have one apple or we want to buy one apple, maybe it's a grocery list or something, right, whatever. But this is an example of a mapping, we have the key apple, uh, or apples mapping to the value one. And that's because this is a string and this is an int. So the most common way to make maps, I guess, could be a map literal or I guess a map instantiation or whatever you want to call it. But a map literal just means we actually start defining some key values we're going to have in the map to start. So to do that, we define var mp, we can put the type that we want, although we don't need to put that there. We're actually going to copy the same thing again. And then we're going to put our curly braces like this. And inside of here, we can define our mappings. So we can define key values. And of course, we can add more things. We can delete things from this. We can check if things exist. But we'll start with a few values just for this example. So I'm going to say actually, yeah, apple. Let's put that at five. And let's put pear at six. And then let's put orange inside of quotation marks. That would be important at nine. OK, now it is important that you add a comma after your last element, unless you're going to do a new line. Um, that's just something in Golang you might see an error. So just add the comma at the end. It, it doesn't hurt to do that. OK, so I'm going to save this after I go ahead and print out FMT. Uh, I'm going to print out MP and just show you what this looks like. OK, so let's go go run tutorial.go. Let's have a look at our map down in the console here. OK, so we get apple, orange, pear, and it gives us the values. Now, one thing I want you to notice immediately is that these, um, what is it, elements here, mappings, are not in the same order in which we inserted them. That's because a map does not keep track of order whatsoever. It just knows that this key references that value. It knows if a key exists but it does not keep track of the order in which we insert things. So that's something that's important. If you care about the order of data, then you're not going to want to be using a map. Okay, so we have apple, orange, pear, that is the map. Now let's show a few other things. I'll show you how to, we can make other ways to make maps. Uh, so another way to make map is to do like something like MP colon equals, and then we could set it equal to that literal that we just did here. Or we could say MP equals make. And inside of here, we just put map, string int. Now this will make an empty map for us that we could use. Um, I can't call this MP again, just because this one's called MP. But this is another way to make a map one of the most common and this makes an empty map. So just keep that in mind. These are probably the two ways you're going to use there's a few other ways. But if you need that, you can look them up. They're not that difficult. Okay, so we have the map, I'm going to show you now how we can change values, delete values, add values. So to change and access values, what we do is we put MP and then inside of square brackets, we put the name of the key we want to access. So if I wanted to access the value of apple, I would say fmt.println mp at apple. So I usually call this like at or index, but like inside of here, you just put the key. If I put pear, that would give me six. If I put orange, that would give me nine. Apple will obviously return to me five. So let's print this out and see what our output is to make sure I'm not lying. And we get five and then the map. So that is how you access the values. Knowing that you can quite easily change the values. So I can do something like MP apple equals 900. So what I've done here is I've set 
MP at the key apple equal to 900. And coincidentally, this is the same way that you add new values. So let's just run this and I'll show you the change. So apple starts at five, we print it out and then you can see that it changes to 900 afterwards. So that's how you change values. Now to add values, all you have to do is the same thing, except you're just putting a key that doesn't already exist. So if I put, um, I don't know, like some random, I don't want to stick with fruits. Let's just put Tim. Let's say MP Tim equals 900. What's going to happen now if we run this is we'll add a new key value, Tim 900. So we get that Tim 900 and that was pretty easy. That's how you add a new value. So that's how you update, change, access, and add new values. Now let's see how we can delete them. So to delete a value is pretty easy. You write the delete function, you write the name of the map, and then you follow that by the key that you want to delete. So I'm going to put Apple inside of here. What this will do is it will check if Apple is inside the map. If it is there, it will delete it. If Apple is not inside of the map, it just won't do anything. It won't delete that key. So let's run this now and have a look at what we get. And we get nice. So we get that key deleted. We can see that's different than the one from up above. All right. So that is the basics on maps. I'm going to show you now a few kind of tricks and things that are useful to do with them. So one of the things that you typically want to do with maps is you want to check if a key exists. Now that's because you don't want to go about accessing that value um, if the key doesn't exist. And sometimes, you know, you need to do something like if the key doesn't exist, add it in, like stuff like that. So to actually check if a key exists inside of a map and to possibly get the value, you write an expression that looks like this val comma OK colon equals MP at the key that you want. So in this case, I'll put Apple. Now, what this says is if the key Apple exists, store the value in val. If it does not make val whatever the default type is for uh, the type of the map. So that in this case, it would just be zero because that's the default value for int and set this OK variable to represent whether the key exists or does not. So OK will be set to true in the case of Apple because the key Apple exists. But if I put in here, let's say Tim, Tim does not exist in the map right now. So OK would be false and the value would be default zero. So let me show you what I mean. FMT.println val OK. So we'll print those two things out and see what we get when we try to access the key Tim. So we see we get zero false. The reason for that is because the default value of int is zero and false tells us that this key was not inside of the map. Now, if I go ahead and change this to Apple, let's run this here and we get five true because the value five existed and it's true that that is in there. So it's giving us true. So that is how you can check if a value is inside of a map. Now, one important thing to say about maps, uh, this might go a little bit over some people's heads, but I feel like it's important to say is that they access values in a very different way on a lower level than uh, than arrays do. So in fact, accessing values from a map, changing values, adding values in a map happens in om almost instantaneously. It doesn't matter how big the map is, how many keys are inside of it. You can kind of assume that it's going to happen very quickly, very fast, almost instantly. Whereas with arrays, We've seen how they're represented lower down in the computer. And if I wanted to access values in an array that was like 20,000 things long, 20,000 elements long, I would actually have to potentially look at all of those elements to grab the element that I want, which means typically arrays are going to be slower for certain operations than maps. So that just means like only use an array if you actually care about the order in which data is there or you want that kind of structure, that array structure with indexes and all of that. And same thing with slices. So arrays and slices, they're pretty well the same in this explanation. Whereas maps will not store any order whatsoever, but they will keep track of a key and a value and it'll make it very fast to access any key and any value. So that's the two fundamental differences. Um, you'll see if you do any programming problems that maps are used a lot uh, in terms of keeping time complexity pretty simple at what's known as 01 time complexity or big 01. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could show you. I believe we can get the length of the map by calling the len method. Let me check that. I haven't actually tried this before. So let's see if I can do this len of MP. Let's see if that tells us how many keys are inside of there. So go run tutorial.go and we get three. So yes, we can use the len of map and that will tell us how many keys are inside of it. So I think with that, that's all I need to cover for map. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next Golang tutorial.